Ladies, gentlemen, and impressionable children, welcome back to the CIC of XCOM Asia, as our brave soldiers risk it all to save some dusty old trains in India. Yes, it's off to Mumbai this time for Operation Enduring Scepter, and what a critical operation it is. The aliens have decided that exploding these dusty old carriages will be the first domino in their plan of complete geopolitical destabilization. Now there's three things I hate. Aliens, complete geopolitical destabilization, and dominoes. I'm more of a Pizza Hut man myself. And so, our trained professionals are here to derail their nefarious plans. Unfortunately, bomb missions are 100% balls to the wall crazy. The bomb is on a timer which ticks down every turn until you find it and defuse it. The only relief you can find are the little green glowy things, as when they're defused, your timer ticks up a turn. So, rather than the caution and patience which keeps us alive in Iron Man Impossible, bomb missions force us to be rash and dashing, constantly defusing while somehow not dying in the process. And if all that doesn't sound fun enough, well, hey, who's this guy? Human in its appearance. This dapper fellow is the Thin Man, and his abilities are numerous and highly threatening, ranging from his fantastic aim to his excellent dress sense. If those weren't deadly enough, the Thin Man's signature skill is spitting pinpoint toxic clouds, which means even if you've got great cover, he can still screw you over. So now in most games, taking one point of damage wouldn't be so bad. But in XCOM, one point of damage can have disastrous results. So Soylent's panicked, he's stuck in poison, and he's having a generally bad day. Which leaves me with three troops to end this Thin Man before he does anything else. As always, assaults can get you out of very sticky situations, and zone out is up for the challenge. But before I pull the trigger, I notice that this guy is in range of Wilson and his arc thrower. Now at this point, I've never used the arc thrower before, but I figure there's no better time than the present to try it out. 24% to stun. It's a bit lower than what I was hoping for, and as the tooltip helpfully tells me, I need to lower his health before I can reliably tase him. But hey, Zonat should have that covered, right? Oh. So Zonat did a little too much damage, and now we learn about another fantastic Thin Man ability. When they die, they explode in a cloud of poison. So now I have no prisoner, another of my troops is slowly dying, and I have no one to blame but myself. Fantastic. But at least Wilson diffuses our first power node, and the Thin Man threat is over for now. With the clock ticking, Oakley dashes up to a forward position, and we prepare for the next turn. Now an interesting note is that this footage is actually from over a week ago, and now that I'm more experienced, I'm seeing a lot of things I would have done differently. For example, I probably wouldn't have run zone out through the poison cloud. And you want more good news? Have some sectoids! So you might say mistakes are being made. But, we get another node, and we get in cover, pop smoke for defense, and prepare to soldier on. Alright Oakley, we're in a bad spot. We really need this. Come on! Oh, you moth. No, no Oakley, that is not good. So, that sectoid goes on overwatch, and everybody takes their poison damage. Except Soylent, who seems to have overcome it with natural remedies or something. Now I know you missed before, Oakley, but this is your chance to make things right. Headshot, here we go! Okay, maybe next time. So now I'm in a dilly of a pickle here. I've only got two turns to make a move before the bomb blows, and I can't even see the other two enemies, so they're probably in Overwatch as well, waiting for me to charge through. We could try to defuse nodes to our left, but if we go down there, we might trigger even more enemies. So that is also not the best idea. But we've got to start defusing these nodes somehow, so Zone Out runs up in the hope she can do it diagonally. And Mr. Sectoid takes his Overwatch shot, but Lightning Reflexes means Zone Out negates it, so it's a guaranteed miss. Unfortunately, as it turns out, you can't defuse diagonally. But, at least getting rid of that overwatch lets Wilson push up, unshot at. With nothing else she can do, Zonout gets back into cover, and Soylent pushes up so he can hopefully cover next turn. Hmm, well, hope you weren't using that box or anything. 
Now we've got one turn till the bomb blows, which means like it or not, we have to defuse a node. So zone out bounds into half cover to cut the wires. Oh, and look at the time. It's time for the world's greatest sniper again. Oh. Oh, she actually hit him. Well, that's different. And that clears the immediate threat. But there's still two more. We just don't know where they are. With that in mind, Soylent takes a big bounce to get into a firing position, covering the next node, and we hunker down for next turn when we can go in with his support. Or at least, that was the plan. What you're about to see are a string of experiences I like to call the Mumbai Lessons. Lesson 1. When you're cancelling a prompt, use Escape instead of right-click to cancel it, because sometimes right-click cancel screws up and you accidentally right-click a move you don't want. Soylent somehow dodges the point-blank plasma, but now he's in an awful position, like dead next turn unless we kill that sectoid position. So Wilson pushes up to take a shot. Which brings us to lesson two. Always check you're not accidentally using your pistol. But it doesn't make any difference either way because Wilson misses anyway. Now at this point, I'm rather running out of options. Oakley jinx across to see if she can at least help with her pistol, but the fracker is just one tile too far, so it's all down to zone out to save the day as usual. Now her position is rather dangerous too, but it's certainly an improvement on what we had before. Now you can defuse on a dash, so Soylent can defuse the bomb, but first I figure Oakley may as well go back to her original position. And as Soylent as the last person with a move left, I realize my final mistake. Yes, for the first time in my short history with this game, the auto end turn feature is about to lose me the mission. I actually check my options to see if I can turn it off, but it turns out that wasn't a feature on the Firaxis design board. With no other option, I try to move anyway, just in case it'll auto defuse or I can spam click it, but it's too late. Looks like you found the bomb. Get over there and deactivate it. The bomb is lying. Yeah, I'll get right on that. So the bomb activates and everyone's about to die. Or, maybe not, because apparently Zonout is just so damn stubborn that she takes Plasma to the face at point-blank range and shrugs it off. Now this is fantastic news because it means Zonout can join the rest of the squad as they flat out run for their lives. The little guy even tries to finish the job, but even with a flank shot, Zonout just doesn't feel like dying today. But as we dash for the Sky Ranger and peace out of Mumbai, I'll tell you who is dying today. Thomas the Tank Engine and his friends and probably a few Indians, which they are not at all happy about. But all things considered, we were pretty damn lucky to make it out with no deaths. I mean, sure, everyone's gonna be in sickbay for a while, except Oakley, but it's a lot better than the alternative. So, panic spreads across Asia as the horrible news spreads. They bombed our trains! No, not our trains! And no, not our trains is right, because losing a mission on Impossible is a very grave matter. See, even if you do everything right and win every mission, you're almost guaranteed to lose three countries by the first month. And if you lose eight, it's game over. So the circus of failure that was the Mumbai op could very seriously hurt our chances in the long run. But it wouldn't be right if we didn't at least try. So we soldier on till the end of the month, at which point it's time to launch a satellite. See, when the new month hits, countries in the red are very, very likely to leave the council. And with only one satellite at hand to reduce panic, it's time to choose who stays. It's no easy task to decide the fate of millions of people, but then again, there's only one real choice. Now just before the year ends, my alien materials research finishes, which gives me vests and readies me for future armor research. Now usually, this is where I'd tell you about the logic and reasoning that drove my next wise research decision. But in hindsight, I had no idea what I was doing, and I'd pick Experimental Warfare next. At the time, I figured getting some Robotanks would be nice, I guess. But I've since come to learn that Robotanks aren't that great, and I really, really, really need either better guns or better armor. So this is actually not a very good choice, and I wouldn't recommend it to you at all. But the past is the past, and on we go to our monthly council report. And we get pretty lucky. 
Brazil, Germany and Egypt have become dirty surrendering traitors, but India has actually stayed with us. I've seen this happen a few times now, and I think when a country goes into the red just before the month's end, they tend to actually not leave. Which means when picking which countries you have to save with satellites at the end of the month, you probably shouldn't bother with the most recent one because they might stay anyway. So, with only three countries leaving, it's impossible business as usual. The good news about the new month is we get our monthly funding, which means we can finally afford to build the officer training school, and that'll mean we can take a fifth squad member on missions. Unfortunately, and you're probably starting to notice a trend this episode, uh, there's another critical mistake here. Because I haven't got the cash, I either forget to, or I choose not to start building another satellite, I can't remember which. And in Iron Man Impossible, uh, as I know now, you really can't afford to start building satellites, like, ever, until you've got them all over the world. So all things considered, we're on a downward trend, and the future looks rather uncertain. This is where I picked the save up from a couple days ago, and after this episode, I've got my work cut out for me. If you're burning with curiosity, join me next time as we travel to New York City for Operation Secret Pyre. But don't tell anyone. Until then, for XCOM Asia, I'm Commander Beagle, and Mumbai is my least favorite city on the planet.